I think of a story and then I create work and I don't even know what's going to come out of it. But that's just mm. me, you know, expressing emotion. I yeah, did it like so, this on purpose. Yeah, I meant to do that. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, so we don't really finish a painting. You just stop working on it. You don't want people coming in trying to tell you how to do your job. Yeah, uh, because... Okay, welcome to Flash Eekies TV. Welcome to Flash Eekies TV. I hope everyone's having a wonderful day. Uh, my name is Terrence, and here I have uh, Tabiso, uh, the master painter, the master painter. He has one of the, the most incredible pieces that I've seen in a long time. So I want him to actually introduce himself and tell a little bit about himself before we get started with this interview. But um, I definitely would like everybody to check him out. And I'm sure by the end of this interview, you're going to want to go check him out. So um, with no further ado, go ahead and introduce yourself and we'll get started. All right. Thank you for having me, Terrence. Appreciate the, the opportunity to be part of this platform and to get the chance to actually speak about myself. So basically, I'm, I'm, I'm a young um, emerging, I'd say emerging artist. Uh, I'm, I'm based in, in Johannesburg in South Africa. And uh, I've, been, I've, been an, I've been an artist since, since, since I was born, man. But obviously, there comes a point when uh, one starts practicing art uh, at a professional level. And for me, that was uh, about six years ago. So um, I major mostly in contemporary paintings and, and uh, I'm more of a painter and an expressionist and uh, um, uh, a creative writer. So my work is largely uh, a portrayal of emotion. Uh, we deal with day-to-day -day matters uh, of, that affects people in, in different, uh, in their differences uh, from, from, from different genders and, and different situations life experiences, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So that's basically me. And my subject matter is mostly women, uh, children, and and sometimes uh, if I'm dealing with a, a particular uh, subject matter or, or a particular series, I do also do uh, masculine pieces like the one that you see just next uh, or behind me here. So yeah, that's pretty much it about me here. Yeah, we're definitely going to get to that. We're definitely going to get to that. It's an amazing piece there. So my first question to you is, um, what was actually your first painting that you've ever did? I mean, I don't care if it was grade school, it was a painting of just, you know, a giraffe or whatever, but just kind of tell me how you first got started and when you realized you, you know, you kind of wanted to be doing this full time. Yeah. Um, I, I I can't really tell the exact exact painting that I first did, but I, I remember one time in my very earlier stages, I think I was in primary school, uh, it was during class and um, I got bored and I started just sketching on, on, on a piece of paper that I had in front of me. And uh, it, was, it was actually a picture of someone that was sitting in the opposite desk. Mm. And I remember the teacher coming to me and saying, uh, why, 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 are you, why are you doing this while during my class? And I told her, but I'm done with the work that I'm doing. And since then, I, I really believe I never look back on, on, on my career as an artist. I just kept doing that. That's, that's, I remember that particular instance because it was the first of many. I so I would say, I, I think I was in third grade, if I'm not mistaken. But obviously, I've I've done uh, drawings before and and uh, even maybe before that. But it was that one incident that I believe really set me uh, and set the pace for me to be where I am today. And uh, I think that that should answer the question that you asked. So so it kind of started off as just you doing like sketches, not necessarily the paintings. Yes, um, it was me mostly doing sketches on, on paper. I was doing it as a hobby because that was something that I could do. And uh, for years, I was, I was a sketch artist. I was drawing and drawing. I only really got to paint. Um, uh, I think that was when I got to, to the age of 20. 
that's when wow. I really started painting. But before that, I was just, it was just pencils, charcoal, um, uh, colored pencils, uh, uh, pastels and all that. But I really started painting at the age of, of 20, yeah. Nice, nice. So let me ask you a question then. Um, before you actually do a painting, do you kind of do a sketch first or do you just go straight into paint, straight paint to the paper? Or do you kind of like paint over the sketch that you kind of do underneath? Oh, that's that's a question that I've been asked a lot. Uh, my answer is always, it, it depends. Okay. Sometimes I, I get up, um, I just look at the canvas. I sit there maybe uh, for, for a long time, could be an hour, three hours. I just start meditating, whatever happens. And then okay. there are times when I just get up and I just start painting. I just take the brush and dip in paint and just start spreading paint all over. And I don't even know what's gonna come out of it, but that's just mm. me, you know, expressing emotion um, in there and just working on how I'm feeling at the particular moment. And then there are times when I really have to sketch and, you know, so, sort of come up with a frame of how this is going to look like. That happens mostly when I'm telling a story or, or when I, I'm trying to get some, some features into perfection. But seeing as I'm an impressionist, there are times when I really don't have to sketch. I just get onto it because I've been practicing this for a long time now, for years. So uh, I, I pretty much have a rough idea of uh, the, the tonal variations and where the eyes are, are supposed to be and the, the effect of light on, 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 a, on a form or figure. So right. sometimes I don't, I don't even need to sketch. I just go for it and, and yeah, that's it. So that's it depends amazing. really. Yeah, that's depends amazing. on how I'm feeling. That, uh, that kind of goes into my next question, which is kind of like, do you come up with the name or the theme of the paintings before or after? I know you kind of answered that a little bit, but um, so are you basically saying that sometimes you do, sometimes you don't, but kind of dive into that a little more for me? Yeah, yeah, um, that's, that's pretty much the same thing. Sometimes I think of a story and then I create work that uh, expand on that particular story. Sometimes I sit down and maybe at a park or, 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 or even when I'm driving, I'm just driving and I'm just thinking of a story. I'm thinking, what should I communicate to people out there? And then I get to my studio and I start doing sketches that are in alignment with, with that particular story or, or thought. Uh, and then sometimes, sometimes I paint and the painting itself it, it sort of uh, gives me direction as to what uh, it, it, it ultimately becomes and what message it ultimately gives to the world out there. So it's, it's really a thing that, that depends on, um, like I said earlier, it, it depends on how I'm, I'm feeling particularly at that moment. There are times when really I have to sit down and plan and think of how many pieces I'm going to produce. Maybe if let's say I'm working on a series and how many pieces am I going to produce for this particular series? And uh, for that series, like what it, each piece should say something, but that contributes to the to the to the to the whole storyline. And then, yeah, obviously sometimes it's just a matter of you know what, let's just take the paint and let's the brush lead. And often when that happens, I also do masterpieces. I I don't understand true why. Artist. Yeah, it, true yeah. artist, man. True artist. Yeah. So yeah. do you kind of do you make pieces uh, particular to people's needs? Like, have you ever had somebody come to you and ask you to, to, to make a painting, you know, kind of particular to what they want? Or do you just kind of do your paintings? And if somebody likes it, they like it. If they if they don't, they don't. And just, you know, kind of sell it as is. Yeah. Um. So when, when I first started in my career, I, I was doing lots of both. It was like 50 percent. Uh, making uh, uh, pieces of what people want and 50% of what I liked doing. Uh, but as I evolved and as, as I'm growing as an artist, I'm, I'm now really growing towards only making pieces that I want because, you know, when sometimes there's a lot of limitations when you have to do something that someone else wants because they're not an artist and they have other maybe details that they are thinking or specifications that are not really in, in line with your signature style or what you want uh, the look to be like. 
And um, sometimes, you know, someone would come and they want a, a perfect picture. And I'm sure you've noticed from my work that I don't really like doing something perfect. Like if you see <laughs> from the piece behind me, it's like blurred faces and all that. So mm -hmm. I just like to be allowed to be free and to, to, to just work according to how I feel. So sometimes, um, especially now, I, I'm, I'm very limited on taking commissioned work for, 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 you know, those specifications where someone says, uh, this is the detail that I want and this is what I want, et cetera, et cetera. So it's more now, now it's more of, um, I'm doing this, hi, this is what I have, this is what's available. If you like it, you know, take it. If not, I'll keep it. It's, it's pretty, uh, pretty simple like that now. Yeah. So you don't want people coming in trying to tell you how to do your job. <laughs> yeah, uh, because, yeah. you know, because I feel like I'll be trapped. I feel like I'll be really limited and trapped most of the times, unless if, you know, there, there are people, of course, who, who understand the, the, you know, the variations of, of art and who understand the different emotions that artists go through. And they'll just come through and they'll be like, ah, you know what, just work on what you can, just do what you wanna do on this piece. I, I already love your style. So just be free. And that's when, you know, I can, I can take a commission like that because that person has already allowed me to, to, to interpret whatever they, they want in, in the way that I see best. So they trust my intuition, they trust my judgment on it and my interpretation. So I, I, I take mostly those uh, as compared to someone who would come and you know they, they sort of want to tell me to go this direction and mm -hmm. you know not deviate whatsoever. So it's, it, it becomes easier for me. Not that I don't like challenges, but um, I feel like it's, it, it's, it's better for me. It's easier for me as an artist, as a person, as someone who's growing to be allowed to, to play around with what I want to do and how I want to do it as compared to having to, to, you know, to stick to a holistic approach or something like that. Nice. nice. Yeah. Sounds good, man. I definitely, um, I, I, I kind of would second that because if I was in your position, you know, I would kind of yeah. want to feel a little more free to do whatever I want. And then, you know, yeah. kind of, because obviously um, if somebody likes it, that's kind of their own perspective. So sure. if somebody likes it or doesn't like it, it's kind of, you know, to each his own when it comes to paintings and artists. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I definitely, was, you know, wouldn't want to put that bondage on anybody. If I was actually seeking a painting, I would just say, you know, paint something. If I like it, I like it. If I don't, I don't. Um, sure. Kind of which goes into my next question is, um, have you ever painted something that you personally didn't like? But somebody else did and you were like okay well here you know you actually were still able to sell it <laughs> or did you throw it away <laughs> yeah um that, that that happens a lot actually because really uh because you know as a growing artist you you are always practicing number one number two you are always almost always painting something so there are times when i just you, you, you with painting um uh, remember i don't know if you're familiar with with what picasso once said he says we don't really finish a painting you just stop working on it mm. so there are times when um i'm working on a piece um i work on it today maybe come back tomorrow work on it i like it i like the progress so far come the day i look at it and i think ah you know that's <laughs> not that's not how i want it to be and i feel yeah. painting all over it and then sometimes yeah. I just think, ah, let me just take it down, put another can, a new canvas and, and work on it and stuff. And so, you know, I've had instances where someone would come through and they would like that particular painting and I'm shocked. And, you know, so, yeah. You say you're shocked? You. Yeah, definitely, yeah. It's, oh, it's, man. It's, 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 <laughs> because then I, I look at the piece and I don't think that it's what I wanted it to look like, but then someone else comes through and they love it. But I think that that actually builds up to this point where, you know, um, I, 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 I'd, I'd, I'd like to believe that I've always allowed myself to, to work in such a way that my work is, mm -hmm. it gives people an allowance to interpret it um, and in, 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 in a way that they, they resonate with it. So mm -hmm. I feel like that, it's, that, that becomes a contributing factor now as to when someone comes through and they like something that I don't necessarily like, it means they'll have had that privilege of interpreting it and yeah. they love it. And yeah, so we just we just flow, we just flow like that. 
Cause that has to be an amazing feeling, man. It has to be an amazing feeling for sure. I can only yeah, imagine. Yeah, like, man, yeah, I don't yeah. even, I don't even like this. But if somebody comes through, and say, "Oh, that's amazing," you know, that that has to be a great. Yeah, feeling. that's pretty. Yeah, cool. but obviously, when that happens, you, you don't say, "Nah, that's not amazing." <laughs> you like it, man. Yeah, I yeah, did it like this on purpose. Yeah, I meant to do that. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, so, all sure. right, all right, cool. Let me ask you this: um, like, how do you kind of like um? set the stage for yourself before you actually go into a painting is there you know a particular way you like your lighting do you like to be alone uh, do you allow people to be in the room with you um yeah. is there any is there any music that you like to play while you're while you're painting like go and get into some of that for me yeah i think um to to answer that question i'll i'll, I'll break it down to to maybe three three different stages they stage the first stage is where I challenge myself as an artist. Um, since I'm a growing artist, I always strive to, to, to just try and make sure that my previous, my, my next piece is better than the previous one. Not that I condemn the pieces that I've done before, but I feel like, you know, the, with the love that I'm getting from my work, I feel like I, I always feel the need to, you know, give out a bit more of myself. Sometimes I look at a piece and I feel like, I could have done more. So, and then now I tell myself, okay, next time we'll do more. So there's that emotional phase where now, um, you know, I'm just dealing with myself, working on, on, on myself and being in an emotional state where I'm able to produce like a very good painting. It could start by just winning a morning or something like that. And then uh, uh, the, the second stage is where now, you know, the preparatory stage when I'm sketching. And so that now brings in the other aspect of, music uh, because you know normally you cannot separate art and music i i prefer uh, it, it depends it depends on what I'm, yeah. yeah yeah it depends on what i'm doing but i don't mind having people just as long as they don't disturb um and um i could work on on on, on my own just with ease because sometimes i just work through the nights i'm just painting the whole night uh, until daybreak you know and sometimes we stand in front of a canvas for like 12 hours and maybe just take a break here and there so with me really it's it's it, there's no clear-cut line as to how i do where i would say no i just come and do three hours and then i'm done or come and do how, how many hours or do it this way whatsoever everything really is 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 dependent on uh my state of mind and the story that I want to tell or something like that. So if, if I want to tell a, a, a story full of energy, I, I, I need to listen to something that has rhythm and energy and the vibe to it. And if I want, you know, um, something that is, that, that is a bit gentle and with, with a gentle approach and I want to use some gentle strokes. And so, yeah, obviously some soft music and all that. So there's no specific, mm. you know, music that I would say, uh, yeah, this is what I use and stuff. I just, it all, it all depends on what I'm working on. Nice. Okay. Okay. I was wondering that because yeah. I'm thinking like, if you were, if you're playing soft music, I can just imagine that whatever you're painting is kind of like going to manifest into something that's kind of a more softer tone of the painting. And then if you sure. put on something a little more active, I can just see you just going in with the brush. Yeah, so, you yeah. know, kind of like letting your mood determine what you're actually painting. Um, so yeah, how do you how do you kind of do you think that your mood affects um, actually what the painting is going to actually turn out to be, or or do you think that yeah, it's like you go um, into it already knowing? There are times when I feel like a whole lot of this this uh, spontaneous random you know big big strokes on on a piece of canvas, and you know even when I'm working with the charcoal, it's just there's a lot of energy and movement to it. And then there, there are times when I just, I'm just like calm and it's more calculated. It's more, you know, towards um, um, a really calculated uh, side of side of things. Uh, so it, it, it depends like that, yeah. Nice, nice, nice. Okay. Um, what is your favorite painting that you've done so far? Do you have a favorite at, at least? I have a favorite drawing. Drawing? For paintings, okay. yeah. For paintings, I've had a lot of, of favorites. Um, one, of, one of them being the latest piece that I did uh, uh, from, from the series, that, uh, the, the series with the ropes, if you check the series with the ropes and stuff. And there's, there's a painting that shows a man who's, who's struggling uh, to, pull, to pull the ropes off, 
off of him and you know sort of lift the burden and these these other guys that are sort of pulling the ropes that are that are, that are tripping his mind i i've loved i've loved the piece um these two other pieces but i think the the all time favorite for now is it's actually a drawing it's a drawing of a young boy i did it in back in 2015 um with with some pencils it's it's a pretty pretty big piece and it was collected uh by some gallery um the the drawing shows a young boy in a village uh it, it's it's an african setup and in the background there's a heart uh, that's that's almost demolished it's it's you know it's almost an inhuman condition that that is there and you know there's chickens and all the setup of a rural setup and and he's just sitting on a branch not even wearing his shirt he's just putting on his you know his lower um his his pants and but he's smiling you know he's smiling he's happy he he it 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 was for me that drawing has been a symbol of contentment for so many years where it doesn't matter where one really comes from but what one is inside is what really depend it determines the kind of a person that they are so that's that's mm. that's why that piece has just been amazing to me it's there on my instagram page i think it's one of the the, the earliest posts if not okay. the first so yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna go check that out i, I think that you given that description is like a a flash Shiki's tv exclusive right sure. there that's that's amazing yeah. i can't wait to go back and check that out man that sounds yeah, yeah, amazing yeah. I actually, um, I have looked through a lot of your pieces. Um, I will say that my favorite piece so far, um, uh, let's see, I think it was named um, Letters to Self. Oh, yes, Letters to Self. Yes, indeed. Can you explain that a little bit? Kind of talk about where that, you know, the, the thoughts behind that painting came from? And Letters to Self is that piece that is sort of talking to me and to whoever feels like they can, you know, um, they, they can resonate with it. They, you know, where it's saying, if if you are going to change the world, the change has to come from you first. If you are going to tell the world about mental health, you have to display uh, some sense of mental mental health first. Um, the, 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 the painting is done from a background where we are battling, uh, especially the masculine side, we're battling with issues of, of of gender inequality, the abuse of women, and you know, you are a provider, you are, you're supposed to be, for example, a father, you're supposed to be a husband, you're supposed to be a hustler at the same time, and, and an artist. And for, for artists whom I regard as givers, there's a lot that you know comes from them. So the the painting is both a consolation and and a challenge to 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 to, to, to me to someone else who can also feel the same, that um, there is literally that we can do to change the world if we haven't done the, the groundwork in changing ourselves, in working on our characters, in making ourselves better, in, 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 in obtaining freedom of thought, and in, in obtaining uh, mental health, in, in really those, those issues where you are a free soul yourself then you can go and work on freeing someone else. Um, I can uh, use an example of um, when you want to tell someone that they can be a better person, you have to be a better person yourself. Mm. So that, that, that's Thank pretty you. much, yeah, that's, that, that's, the, that's the background story to the painting letters to self. Uh, I might, I'm tempted to ask how you interpreted, you interpreted it yourself. Um, okay, that's, uh, I'll definitely answer that. So how I interpreted it was similar to what you're saying. Um, basically, yeah. um, when I, when I, when I kind of read the description of it on your, on your website, um, it basically kind of gave me the understanding that for one, um, a lot of your paintings, or at least this painting in particular was, um, would make me have a self-reflection to look into yeah. myself to kind of figure out, um, you know what it is that actually makes me happy or makes me puts me at peace um yeah. so um i think i, I think that is kind of i kind of looked at it as an affirmation for me to look into myself always to be able to find my sort of truth or my sort of peace 
and moving yeah. forward in life. And um, yeah. also with the, that, I, I kind of got that understanding from a couple of these descriptions from some of the other uh, portraits as well, some of the other paintings True. as well, um, that basically that's kind of why I asked that because I was wondering if um, a lot of the paintings came from self experiences or just meaning even, you know, the thoughts that you've had um, with self before you actually did the painting or did you kind of come up with that afterwards when you, after you did the painting? So that was kind of where I was going with the question because I didn't know if like you would just get, get the canvas, create the painting and then interpret it your own way and say, well, you know what, this is what I got from this painting that I did. Or do you go into that saying, you know what, I need to do a painting about self-reflection, how men see each other, how men see women, how men see kids, which I think is, incredibly dope on your part because being able to get through to people um get through to everybody you know about um the 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 real important things in life which are you know mostly stuff that is has to do with self before it has to do with anything else um yes. you know so i, I kind of just wanted to kind of understand if that's where you came if that's where your mind was at in creating those portraits or not um as opposed to just let me go ahead and paint something and then after I'm done painting it, go ahead and give it a name and give it an understanding. Yeah. Um, so, you know, every every artist, I believe every every professional artist has a message uh, for, about about his work, his or her work. Mine is really, in, in a nutshell, it's about self-reflection. Because I sit and think to myself, why would uh, why would someone want to do something good for someone else and why would someone think of changing someone else when they haven't done the work on themselves why why why, why would i want to come and change you if i haven't worked on myself if i have my own flaws for example if i have my own weaknesses so most of my pieces really are about that establishing confidence from self, you know, establishing joy and peace and, and, you know, understanding love from a perspective where I need to first of all understand before I, I, I for example, before I, I engage with someone, before I give myself to someone, I need to understand the things about me that, you know, are, are, are important before I give someone else that, that, that platform so that, when they come through, they don't have to struggle, you know, go through the struggle of trying to, to learn a lot about me. And, and I'm also there adding to that burden because I don't even understand myself or what I want. But if I get to a point where I know what I want, I know when I want it and I know how I want it. If, if it's a peace of mind, you know I, I know, I know how I want my peace of mind to be like. So right. most of my pieces really, they, they, they sort of, you know, are directed to that the aspect of, self-reflection work on yourself first you know you you could you could do a lot about talking about other people you know talking to other people but if you yourself have maybe a bad temperament you you know it, it's it's just like a loud sounding nothing so my pieces really are, are, are mostly about that they're mostly about self-reflection and then before you extend to and spread the love to others out there so um even with that as well so you find that there are times really when I, I do a piece and it, it's, it's, it naturally gravitates towards that, whether it's planned or it's unplanned. Most of the times you find that it's my piece, almost all of them, they gravitate towards a space where now we're talking about, uh, okay, I see that, okay, you want to change the world, but what have you done to change yourself? You know, and I see that you are you are, you are there, maybe for example, we, we live in an age of information and we're connected. For example, right now you're, you're in Washington, DC. I'm, 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 I'm here in South Africa, Johannesburg. It's easy to connect, you know? So people have become a community. And most of the times when these, these, we are all a global community like that, these people want to project their own thoughts and ideas to others, for example. And most of the times you realize that those people, they have a lot to do to work on themselves. So my work is that message that comes and say, hey, look, you want to do some change on someone, you want to change the world, work on yourself first. That's where the change begins. That's where you know, everything starts, yeah. You know what, I think you hit it on the head with that. And I think that's why a lot of your pieces resonated with me so much. 
Um, I'm actually, uh, I'm alkaline vegan, right? So yeah. I became yeah. vegan in 2015, and then I'm yeah. progressing to becoming an alkaline vegan uh, shortly yeah. after that, which means basically I, I only eat natural fruits and vegetables, only thing that yes. grows naturally. And um, in my journey, as I'm actually, you know, getting deeper and deeper and more strict on my diet, and I'm into mm -hmm. fasting long term and stuff like that, I'm actually fasting right now. Um, yeah. It enabled me to be able to say, you know what, how am I going to tell somebody else to get their health together and to get their health, you know, to do things to better their health if I'm not able yep. to do that myself? How am I able to tell somebody, look, your health will get a lot better if you fasted yeah. for 30 days. If I've never fasted yeah. for 30 days, how am I going to yeah. tell you, you know, stop eating hamburgers because it's making your health bad if I'm eating hamburgers yeah. still? You know what I mean? Yeah. So I yeah. think that's exactly, you know, the, the way... I interpreted a lot of your paintings is that, you know, we can't look to others to do things that we're not willing to do for self. Um, yeah. So, yeah, that's amazing. It's, it's I, I very love that. easy. Yeah, it's very easy to judge the next person and tell them to do things that we, if you were put in the same situation, it's very hard to do. Uh, you, you mentioned that you're vegan. I've, I've also I've, I've been vegetarian for, for, for 10 years straight now. Nice. And moving to, towards, you know, vegan. And you know, these are some of the things that um, are, are, are the thoughts that make up my work, that if I am to say, let's try and, you know, minimize on doing certain things, maybe to work to, to make the world a better place. And I'm not even part of that, you know, it doesn't make sense. So it, it always has to start with me. If, if I'm going to tell a young person who has been body shamed that uh, you need to be confident about yourself, and I'm not confident, uh, it doesn't make sense. So I have to build confidence from within, you know, then I can help someone to be confident about themselves. So this, that's, that's pretty much the message that, that, that my work here, my, that my work uh, gives out there, yes. For sure, all right, man, we, we're gonna salute to the vegan and vegetarian community. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let me ask you this question, now that you said that, do you think that um, after you or when you change your diet, um, it started to reflect in your work? Well, I would say partly yes, because it did a lot on me in terms of understanding the term discipline. It takes a lot of discipline for me to be able to be to have come that far as um, as a vegetarian, and so. It, it, it also, you know, projects or reflects on my work that it takes a lot of discipline for me to be able to push like that, to push myself to the limit and to, to maintain a strict message, the same message, you know, over and again, regardless what people would come. You know, as an artist, I, I believe most artists go through this way. Um, as soon as people realize that maybe you're partying or something, they want to come through and tell you what you should do with your work, but they were never there. Uh, when you start, they don't understand, you know, what what drives you or what 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 um, was the root cause of your journey or your path or what your calling means or something like that. And then yeah. they just be coming through and saying, uh, okay, so you need to do this, you need to do that. And I understand that some of those things will be coming from good intentions, maybe. But you know, it, for me, it 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 really did something about discipline because now I'm a, I'm able to maintain a certain course you know, course of action and, um, you know, keep a stick, stick to it, keep at it until I, I, I reach a, a target. And you, that's, I believe that um, is actually a, an ingredient to becoming a, a person of inspiration because nice. even all the people that have made it in life, they have, they had discipline as, as a very good ingredient. So, so yeah, if that answers your question. Yeah, definitely so, man. Definitely so. And I 100% agree with you on that. And um, I think the main factor is the discipline um, because yeah. it's not easy to, you know, to, especially if you, at one point you were a meat eater or, you know, somebody who wasn't vegetarian. I know it takes a lot of discipline to, you know, refrain from certain things as you progress through, you know, a, a healthier lifestyle, eating, making healthier choices. Um, sure. it, it really yeah. just is all about discipline at the end of the day. Um, and mm -hmm. As, a, as you achieve those different levels of discipline, you know, I feel like, um, you know, speaking from, from, from my own personal life, um, as I achieve different levels of discipline, I feel like I, I, I learned more things about myself that helped me to better assess, you know, what I actually did like 
what I didn't like or, you know, what made me feel good or what didn't make me feel good. I was able to kind of like separate everything and just get a better understanding of who I was as, you know, as Terrence. Yeah, yeah. You you grow as a person. You sure. you no longer take haphazard decisions or approaches to to life and situations. Whatever you do now, it becomes more calculated. You you sit down. You reason first. You know you 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 you. For example, even if it comes to spending, you you reason. You discipline yourself. You it it really affects a lot of aspects in your life because as you grow like what you're saying, you understand yourself at a very different level altogether. And that, that contributes to you being a better person, being a healthier person to have. And, you know, even if maybe you are to be in a relationship, you become a better person, a good person to have in a relationship because then the other person is dealing with someone who knows themselves, who knows what they want and they're disciplined, oh, they're disciplined enough yeah, in that respect, yeah. For sure, man. Awesome. Awesome, man. All right. So let's talk a little bit about the painting behind you. I haven't seen that one, but I already like yeah. it. Yeah. So this one is, is a personal collection from the, from the series uh, submission, 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 sorry, submission series that I started working on back in 2020 and um, it extended through to 2021. So if, if you notice on, on the piece, uh, there's this the blurred face and, you know, these people, they seem to be pulling different directions. And at the same time, they seem to be finding themselves. And there's, uh, there's that dove, the, the, the whole series had that dove on it. And it was a symbol of peace. It was a symbol of hope. So the series was really a, 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 a story of juxtaposing chaos and, and, and order where it in 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 one from one perspective it's talking about the chaos that we that 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 we come across every day man you know we were dealing with covid things were just crazy and hence you know there's this this uh strokes that somewhat look a bit violent and you know they just they just really they, they distort the the meaning of where these people are really going if you just look and at the feet and all that it's, it's like distorted and um, and uh, these are masculine, uh, these are masculine guys, you know, these are men and they, they're just looking for direction, a sense of direction of like where are things going like this, you know. But at the same time, it also talks about hope. Uh, I used, you know, those, those bright colors in the background, those warm colors to, to sort of tell um, a story that, you know, there's going to be a sunrise, you know, someday we are here now we're dealing with COVID things are hard people are losing jobs people are losing their lives it's it's a crazy time but yeah it's going to be all right you know and so now that dove comes and sets the peace between men and men and also you know between men and those who are watching that like look there's going to be hope that's amazing so that's man. Yeah, and if you notice that the 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 two men they are tied waist waist to waist. It it's actually for me it was uh, uh, trying to, to I was trying to portray the fact that we are at the end of the day we are tied to one another, although we are different in many ways, but we are actually one. You know, and so in times like this, we need to work together. While I'm trying to find myself, while I'm trying to find my feet. I need to also look around for another brother mm. who's out there in a worse situation than me. So that's why I collected this piece personally, because I look at it and I feel like, you know what, I'm working on myself, I'm building my career, I'm working on my life, but there's someone else who's having it worse than me. I, I need to think about that person as well. I need to do what I can, what's within my capacity to help that person. If there's someone who's struggling with, with maybe they, they're struggling with stress or, or they don't have food, whatever it could be, yeah. it could be mental health, whatever, you know, they, they don't have confidence in themselves and stuff. I have to think about that person as well while I think about finding my own feet, yeah. That's beautiful, man. What, what were you listening to while you painted that, uh, Lucky Dubai? <laughs> <laughs> Funny, I was, I was actually listening to an instrumental. So when, when I want to rely on my thoughts, there are times when I like to listen to, to music that's poetic. I like the poetry and, and it vibes and it, it rhymes with what I'm doing. And then there are times when I just want to listen to what I'm saying or to listen to uh, what's, 
whatever is happening in here is saying and what the story is. I'm sort of reading the story in my mind and interpreting it on, 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 on the canvas. So I was listening to an instrumental. There are no words there. It's just, you know, the mm-hmm. instrumental and it's allowing mm-hmm. me to really dive deep and merge into whatever I'm doing. And yeah, it was this, uh, up, beautiful. Instrumental. Yeah. Have you ever did a painting in this in silence with no, nothing in the background, no noise, no nothing. It just really like tuned everything out and listened to whatever's going on inside your head. Yeah, sure. I, I've done that too. I, I do that sometimes. And most preferably if, if it's, it's night or if it's raining, uh, because mm. to me, the rain is really a symbol of a symbol of hope, a symbol of a new start, a freshness of life. So whenever it rains, man, we get water, uh, plants feed, and the ecosystem Animals. balances pretty well. So when it rains, I, 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 I get to a different state of mind. I, my mind really goes and why it goes far, you know, in terms of thoughts. And so, yeah, sometimes when that happens, I don't really need music. I just take my process and start working. That's amazing, man. That's amazing. How long does it take for some of the paintings to dry? Like, I'm, I'm kind of interested in the process. Like, does it take a while yeah. for them to dry, or is it something that yeah, you kind of just? That's that's another question that I've been asked a lot, and my answer has always been it. It depends. I could take four hours on a painting. I could take four days on a painting. I could take four weeks. I could take months. Hell, there was one painting that I took a year and a half to finish. Ooh. Yeah. So, Man. so yeah. So it 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 really depends. Like, for example, the the series, um, if those were not so silhouette, I started thinking about it in January. And I started doing the sketches sometime in June, July, thereabout. And it was ready in uh, September, October. Man. So yeah, so and and throughout that whole process, um, there are paintings that I did in like three days, and there are paintings that I did in three weeks. So you know, it's it's really there's 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 a lot that goes on, you know, in the process. I got you. So you actually yeah, you yeah. actually kind of answered my next question, which was, do you ever jump back and forth from painting to painting, or do you finish one before you move on to the next one? So I'm assuming you kind of bounce around sometimes. Yeah, sometimes I bounce around a lot. Actually, most of the times I bounce around a lot. I I could be working on four paintings at the same time. Uh, I could work on one painting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i could work on you know i could have in my studio i could have like four or five canvases just lying there and you know i just get in i walk in and i think okay i'll do the one on the left today and then while i'm working on it i i just look at the one behind me i feel like nah, it needs a, a yellow brush strokes and just go there and, and put some strokes there and leave it like that and then come back or go to the other so yeah it's it's that's what's honest, up, like that. Man. I would yeah. love to like watch you go through that process. You sitting there painting one day, like, hold on. Matter of fact, let me go over here and do this one real quick and put some sure, in that sure. one. That's amazing. Yeah, like, you know, like, like um, I think it was today, uh, if you notice, I posted uh, the portraits, the two women that I did, like they sort of twin, they look like, they look almost like twins. So I, I worked on the first one. And while I was working on the second one, I realized that there, there, were, there were new strokes, new, new press strokes that I added on the second one that I feel like they also needed to be on the first one. So it was now just like going back Ooh. to that one and working on it and coming back. And yeah, it's a beautiful okay, process okay. though. That's yeah. nice, man. I can only imagine. I, I kind of do a lot of work at night. Like I do a lot of my, I feel like I, I'm, I'm a little more creative in the later hours of the night. Um, so yeah. a lot of times I do a lot of brainstorming, a lot of taking notes and stuff like that at nighttime. Sure. But I think that's a little yeah. bit more because I think that um, I'm able to listen to myself a little bit more when it's quiet out. And if there's a lot of stuff going on yeah. in the daytime, I'm, I tend to be a little more distracted. Yeah. So, I, you know, I just assume that, you know, maybe your process might be a little similar to that. Um, but it yeah. seems like from an artist's perspective, I would guess that... Um, you know, maybe you get different outcomes when you're painting in the daytime that you would get if you were kind of like painting at nighttime, if you were sitting there by yourself and, you know, in 
dark time when it's quiet and nobody's running around, the kids aren't calling for you, you know, you know, your, your significant other might not be calling for you, asking for you, or come and, you know, say, come and eat dinner, and you're sitting here trying to finish this last little couple strokes. Um, but so yeah. do you feel like you, you, you get different paintings um, if you're painting at different times of the day? Um, funny thing is most artists actually, they are more creative at night. Um, okay. someone so I'm not weird then. I'm not weird then. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not weird at all. You're normally friendly artists rarely ever sleep. For me though, I'd, I'd like to believe that I'm more at my best towards the, uh, in the early hours of the day, like 3 a.m. ish, you know, and, okay. and all that where where it's like really quiet, you know, sometimes at 12, one, it's, it's quiet, but you know, then, you know, it's really quiet and it's a, it's a new day. It's, it's, it sets the tone for a new beginning. So the other funny thing that I'll tell you right now is that most of the times I already know, I already have a painting before I paint it. I, when, when, when I'm meditating, I have, a picture right. of what I'm going to paint today um, and what it roughly looks like. So it's just a matter of now taking that and putting it into canvas. That's amazing, man. But that is amazing. Yeah, but sometimes it doesn't turn out the way I had it in mind. And sometimes <laughs> it does come out the way I had it. So yeah, we just allow the flow to, to we allow, we just move with the flow and see where it's taking us. But yeah, most of the times I already have what, I, what I'm going to paint. Uh, I already have a few paintings in mind that are ready. They just need me to just go to the studio and put them to action. Nice. So if it doesn't turn out how you envisioned it, um, do you continue with the painting and just, you know, complete it and turn it into something different than what you kind of had in the beginning and then go start on whatever you had in your mind in the first place? Or do you just scrap it and start all over again? Well, I've made peace with the fact that things don't always really turn out the way we envision them. Um, you know what? So one of your extend... pieces said that as well. I, I read that yeah. on one of your pieces too. Yo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It 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 it's, it extends to many situations, not that just not just the painting, that things don't really always turn out the way we want them to be. There are times when you envision that we're going to do this, this and that, and it works out and that's good. We are happy. But there are times when things uh, go a different direction. And I feel like we need to make peace with that because we don't have really, really as much as we can, you know, work on ourselves, control ourselves and stuff. But ultimately, there's something bigger than us and we cannot, you know, control that. So it's not always that things are going to be how we want them to be. So as soon as I made peace with that, I feel like I've made, I've, I've grown as a person, I've grown as an artist and um, yeah. So it's, I've made peace with the fact that things don't always turn out the way they, they're supposed to be. And sometimes it's nicer than I envision it. And sometimes it's uglier, but it's whatever, man. <laughs> sometimes it's ugly. Yeah, I guess that's yeah. it, you know, are you, do you think that you critique your work more than other people do? Pardon? Do you think that you critique your work more than other people do? Like I heard you say, sometimes it comes out uglier, but you know, if I was looking at it and you came with one of these masterpieces that I'm looking at and say, oh, I didn't really like that one, that one was ugly. To me, I might be like, what, you know, what's ugly about it? You know, so do you think that you critique your work, you know, extra hard because you're the one actually painting it? Yeah, uh, like I, you remember I was saying earlier that I always challenge myself to do better next True. time. So yeah. And um, if I understood the question at first, I, I don't know if you said, uh, do you compare with other artists as well? If I, should I answer that? Oh, uh, I didn't ask that, but that was coming up. So yeah, go ahead and answer that too, for sure. Oh yeah. Well, um, comparison is a very subjective term, um, especially regarding uh, art. Uh, I, 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 I say to artists that, the moment we start comparing ourselves one to another, we 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 manufacture hate towards one another. Unless if it's if it's healthy competition, if you know, of which it's something that very few people can 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 master or they can handle, you know, healthy competition where I'm I'm looking at my brother, I'm like, yeah, you're doing this, I'm also doing this, let's do it, let's win together. It's it's very rare, you know. 
So it's yeah. only safest to say, rather than us competing, do what you do, you know, and I do what I do. I, um, if rather we work from a collaborative point of view, we achieve more than when we work from a competitive point of view. So I don't really co compete with other artists. I compete with the artist that I am as a person. I compete with my work, my previous work. If I look at my previous work and I feel like, uh, nah, I wasn't so good, then it means that I've moved a, a, a notch higher, you know, in terms of my experience as, as an artist. If I look at my work now and I look at my work five years ago and I see that there's a lot of changes, then I feel like I, I've achieved something and better. If I, if I receive an email today and, and someone is telling me that, look, your work changed my life. That that is beautiful to me, you know. Nice. That means more to me than when an, when another artist come and and compete with me and stuff. So I always say that competition it's it's unless if it's healthy competition, but you know most of the times competition it, it really help us hate eventually and strife amongst ourselves. Where instead of us mm -hmm. working together to help each other grow. We're now working against each other because I want to be the better one. I want to be the best. If there's yeah. this, I want to be the one who claims that everything should come to me. But that's not how my 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 in my world. That's not how I envision things should be. I hope things should be a different. It should be different way. Um, we work together. You know, you compete with yourself. I compete with myself. And we both grow to become better people in our own perspective and to become better version of ourselves instead of you become a, becoming a better version of me. Because when you compete with me, you end up becoming a better version of me. Yeah. But when I, you compete with yourself, you are a better version of yourself. So that's that's pretty much my approach to all this. That's Jules, man. And uh, I, I think you hit it right on the head with that because... Um, what people don't realize is that you are your your own worst enemy, especially if you're yep. choosing to compete with somebody else, because you can never sure. be that other person. So the, no. it doesn't even make any sense to compete with somebody else. Um, yeah. If you were just to stay in your own lane and, you know, be somewhere at peace with yourself, then you yeah. will accomplish everything that you want to accomplish uh, that will make you yeah. happy. But if you're constantly comparing yourself to somebody else, then you're never really going to yeah. be happy because you're, you're never going to be able to, uh, you know, be that other person for so uh, for the most part. So um, I yeah. definitely agree with you on that. Um, I think that uh, for the most part, I don't have any other questions. Do you have any questions for us? Um, not really, but you know, what I would like to, to just say is that um, this 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 that you guys are doing it's really something that's that's beautiful for for like giving giving the artist a platform to express themselves you know like that and having the voice to speak out because uh art artists especially artists in the african setup have been given less opportunities to really you know show their talent to really speak to the world to really convey their message and so you know lots of love and shout out to you brothers for the work that you're doing and i appreciate you for having me here in the show today and you know i hope hopefully we'll do more of this because um, i'm i'm hoping to have a show that side uh in in the next uh in the coming year or the other year so you know that's that's what's up so big shout out to you and and thank, thank you, you for having me Pleasure is all ours, man, and uh, it was a pleasure having you on. Um, I think that, um, you know, more than just the artistic side of what you're doing, um, I think that you were just able to give uh, a lot of good information about about life and how people should understand how to view themselves um, and how people should understand that, you know, the biggest thing we can do is be at peace with ourselves, and I think that your, your, your paintings kind of, you know, portray that as well. Um, so. That's one of the reasons why, you know, it, it was a blessing for me to, to even do this interview with you because I can see that um, what I got from your paintings is, is symbolic of who you are. Um, so I definitely just want to give you another shout out for that. Um, and um, this is Flashiki's TV, man. Uh, we just want to promote positivity within people um, and help, you know, 
to see, help people to see that um, at the end of the day, you know, we all can be one and we all can kind of look at each other as, uh, as brothers and promote each other's businesses, um, help each other to kind of grow and to achieve higher levels of success that maybe we, we wouldn't do on other platforms. Um, so yeah. with that being said, man, you know, um, reach back out to us. I'll be reaching out to you personally and uh, kind of getting, a, you know, building a, a long-term relationship with you. I do know that I want a painting. So I will be, you know, checking back in with you to, to grab one of these paintings because I've been seeing, uh, I saw the website and I liked a lot of them. I saw a lot of them had been sold already. Yeah. Um, and like yeah. I said, yeah. I'm going to be promoting your site to people. I know a lot of people that are you know, interested in art as well. So I'm going to be trying yeah. to just get you a little bit more traffic, uh, a lot of traffic if we can, just so people can yeah. just uh, see you and you can get your name out there. Um, also, um, I want to visit South Africa as well. So um, big, big up and shout out to everybody in South Africa. Um, and I hope that uh, in the future we'll be able to maybe do this again. Yeah, absolutely. I appreciate all that, man. Appreciate the love, yeah. Sure. All right, man. Thank you a lot. And uh, this is Flashikis TV. And thanks for the interview. And talk to you later. See you soon.